Somehow, Oz still found a way to get me to root for him. Pen Ultimate episode of Penguin just dropped, and it was an excellent setup. It wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be, but so much happened. And we learned so much about the Penguin, so let's talk about it. And spoilers if you aren't up to date. We finally got the backstory on what happened with Oz's brothers, and just as most of us suspected, he killed them. What I really liked about the performance and the writing was the ambiguity of Oz's intentions. I'm not quite sure if he really wanted to kill his brother. I personally believe that he stuck them down there to teach them a lesson. But after realizing that they were probably going to die down there, he couldn't care less. And I'm trying to figure out what does that say about his character? Does that mean that self-preservation has been at the Penguin's mind since he was a child? Personally, I think so. But I also think there's something way more insidious with his mother that's making him this way. Which is tea that Sophia clocked in that conversation that she had with Francis. First of all, before we even get to that, I was shocked that Sophia left Vic. I'm assuming that she did so because she knew that the penguin doesn't care about any of his henchmen. And I also think that Sophia doesn't kill children. We've seen her do some terrible things, but it's always been to people that she feels like deserves it. With the exception of Calvin. But even then, I feel like that was Sophia still trying to get a grip of who she was. Ever since we've seen Phoenix Sophia, she hasn't killed anyone that she feels like doesn't deserve it. And honestly, she was treating Francis pretty nice. She even had her get some therapy sessions. I can't believe that this is the second conversation I've seen Sophia have with a woman in which they're not passing the Bechdel test. The conversation is centered Francis around the man, but it's still That's empowering right. for the women that are involved in it. And oh, it's just a test to the writers and the actors that are involved so because I got everything I needed to know for Francis for the moments that she was lucid and I love that Sophia clocked that Francis is the source of Oz being the way that he is which we see later in that flashback where Francis puts this enormous burden on this child and tells him that he is responsible to provide a life that she's always wanted because Francis is a misogynist and she could never fathom doing it herself and so to watch the clash of queens and to have the central conflict be a woman who is seeking independence and another woman who just wants to support a man, they doing it. I am interested to see where did Vic go? I'm still trying to figure out what is the nature of Oz and Vic's relationship. At this point, I think that Oz actually does care for Vic in his own twisted way. Obviously not as much as his mother, but his first instinct wasn't even to really yell at Vic. He's sent him to go get help. And for me, it felt like a tender moment where he's like, I don't want you to get caught up in this. I know people are coming for me right at this moment and you need to get to safety. But then there's another part of me who's like, Frankie, you're talking about the penguin. He sent Vic to go get help. There's nothing deeper than that. And Colin Farrell's performances are so sincere in those moments where he's enacting kindness that once again, it makes me want to root for him. After episode four, I knew for sure I was going to be hands down Sophia. This is my team. I gotta say, when Maroney had him in the sewers, I was sitting there excited trying to figure out how was Penguin going to get out of this? And for the first time ever, he didn't do it by kissing the ring. Honestly, I think Maroney's huge mistake was not gagging this man when he walked in. Maroney gave him way too much freedom in his own headquarters. He out here nodding his henchmen. It's, uh, no, you gonna show us where it's at and you gonna stay in the car tied up. We gonna regulate, you know what I'm saying? That fight between Maroney and Penguin was so visceral and I felt like it was pretty leveled because Maroney's older and Penguin has a bum leg. The sheer luck of Maroney having a heart attack during that fight that Penguin was losing made me feel like there's something cosmic going on with Penguin's luck. In the way that felt authentic, I wasn't sitting there like, this is plot armor. I was just like, this lucky fucking bastard, he did it. And I was so excited for him. Especially the way that he boasted as Maroney was dying, as if he actually had a hand in it. Maybe some of that was so the people outside could hear him and he can get a little bit more clout. Excessive shooting, him telling him, I won. I don't know. It was a lot, but it was so in character for him who's so slimy. I know I said it in the earlier review, but seeing Gia interact with Sophia made me feel like we're watching the origin story for Huntress. And I would love to see Gia have the kill 
Kill Bill 3 moment that we never got and just see a flash forward where she's just killing Sophia and whoever's left from whatever's going on right now. I love that the one moment of clarity Sophia actually has is tied to this little girl who she is responsible for putting in an institution, which honestly looked like Arkham. When I saw Sophia in there, I thought she was visiting an inmate and I was shocked to see that it was a child in there. And that's on Sophia and she can rationalize it as you were saving her, but at the end of the day, she put her in the same type of institution that created the Sophia we see now. Sophia's relationship with the therapist is getting very complicated. From the last couple of episodes, we've seen interactions in which Sophia is the dominant one. She's the one calling the shots. She is the one telling him what to do and he's just there for support. But this time we saw him not manipulate, but influence the way that she thought as she moved and her decisions. She got a little bite from him and that kind of scared me. It was definitely the push I guess Sophia needed to go that extra step because she was ready to commit suicide. He did help Sophia understand though that she never really wanted this game. We've seen this entire season that she does not want money. She doesn't care about it. Every time it's brought up, she's like, this is gross. Why do we care about money? I will say though, this happy ending that she's looking for, she could have got in Italy if she went with John Vici told her to, but she gonna get back however she feels right. And I'm not here to tell her how to go on her journey. And this is where I am torn because I want Sophia to win, but I also want Oz to win. That final scene where she sends in her G-Wagon, I've never been so torn in which I was okay with either side winning in that situation. There was just so many moments of anxiety. Is Sophia in the car? Is his mother in the car? Did she find Vic? I knew there would be a bomb in there. I just didn't know if it would be associated with the body and I was kind of happy to see that it wasn't. But this was definitely one of those moments where I was endearing towards Oz, especially after he did that beautiful speech to all of his gang members, who he was referring to as peers, his associates. He says, this is your investment, let's protect it. Because in their mind, they're not just writing for Oz, they're writing for their own cause, they're part of this family, they're all made men. And then Oz doesn't even have the decency to yell out bomb before he runs. He's terrible. And yet when I saw him literally rise from the ashes of his brother's grave, I can hold you, I kind of cheered. I made a second video last week where I talked about the parallels that we see between Sophia and the Joker. And I definitely saw that on full display here where she blew up the entire drug operation. Now I will say, I think that's very low stakes for Sophia because she was the connect to Bliss if I recall. She still has the therapist with her. And so in due time, if she really wants to rebuild that empire after everyone's dead, I think she has the means to do so. Just the significance of her blowing up everything she's been fighting for, everything she lost her family for, in response to someone saying that that is what you want, while also eliminating every ally but Vic that Oz has. I'm wondering now if these families will support Oz because now he has no leverage. He doesn't have the drugs. And as we saw in the last episode, they don't really like him. But at this point, why would they get involved? I know I wouldn't if I were them. Now let me end this review with a couple of predictions for the final episode. I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen and they may all be wrong, they may all be right, but I wanna put it out there before it airs. First of all, Frances is dead and this is coming from a woman named Frances, but that girl is cooked. I knew she would die the moment that Oz says that she is the last thing that's keeping him good. And for us to see him really go into villainy, although I think he's been a total despicable villainous person, we're gonna have to see that girl clap. So Frankie, she gone. As far as Vic goes, I thought he was going to be way more involved this episode, particularly with the outcome with Francis. But since Sophia doesn't have access to him, I think he may be the only one left when the smoke clears. Mark my words, but I feel like the final shot of the episode is gonna be Vic looking over the city in the way that Penguin did at the beginning of the season. Sophia, I also think she's gonna die and it's sad because I love her and her story is so tragic. But really, I think that this may go full Greek tragedy and we may see her and Oz die in the finale. And in the final shots, even though they said we won't see him, we're gonna see Batman get ready for Vic. Side note, I was a defender of Batman not being in this show because I thought it was low stakes and it didn't make sense for him to be involved. But at this point, I need Batman to lock in on the disenfranchise. Because what are you saying that they blew up a piece of Crown Point and that man ain't nowhere to be found? I better see him or Bruce 
trying to help them out. We're beating up people trying to figure out who set off that explosion. Like, it's a lock in. And this is coming for someone who's like, we don't even need Batman in here. Yeah, at this point we do because these gang members are going buck wild and God knows what they're gonna do in the next episode. That being said, I thought this episode was good. It didn't excite me or move me in the way that other episodes did. I have to say those other episodes are so insanely good that it's hard to compare the two. Either way, I have to be fair and score it. So in comparison to the rest of the season, I'm gonna give this episode four out of five Frankie Flames. But please tell me, what are your predictions? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to follow me if you want more in-depth reviews about this, drip analysis, or if you want to watch me play Dragon Age Velgard because I've been doing that on live. But until next time, have a fantastic week, my friends.